Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the Chunky Crochet Short Row Scarf. Now I've never done anything like this and this was actually a rippable pattern over at Michael's that you could rip off the shelf but we have a download here. I just go to the more information link of this video and you'll be able to get that. So what we have here is actually a pretty simple concept. It looks really intimidating because I've never done anything like this and I also wanna give you a suggestion if you don't wanna use the back loops there's no crochet police. I know that's a big shocker but if you decide not to use the back post or the back loops on this you pretty well get away with that as well I'm sure. So what we have here is a two pager. I'm going to leave the tassels for you um, to do another. There's other tutorials available here on YouTube on how to do tassels. The main objective today is to do this pattern. So let's take a quick look at the instructions. Let's take a look at this pattern and what we have here is that there's rows one through nine. That's the repeat. Now rows one through nine is an odd number and we need that because the wedging you'll notice that it'll go in one direction and then it turns but it's using the same set of instruction. That's because it's an odd number. So if this was one to ten you pretty much would be in trouble. So because it's an odd number it works out even better. So that's how it's being able to turn and adjust like this. So when you're getting to the end of this pattern or when you're satisfied with it you will notice that when you look here this is one wedge this is a second. So you wanna finish so that there's an even number of wedges. So it's one, two, three, four and etc. So you wanna finish when you have an even number of wedges and then what you'll just do is just single crochet on the back loop only to get across. Now it's recommending three balls of Karen Sprinkle Cakes. This was out a few years ago but it's all fresh look now. New colors and you'll find that over at Michaels. It's exclusive as Karen Sprinkle Cakes. You'll need an eight millimeter size L crochet hook and I also have done you one up even better. I got a crochet diagram for you today. So here's my tutorial worksheet. I do this kind of thing. I usually do it by hand when I'm trying to learn this concept so I can teach it to you. So what I've done is that I've written out these instructions. This is downloadable on the crochetcrowd.com if you wish to have this. So I just made it easier to read by not putting the back um, loop symbol in but just assume that it is. That's just the way it is. The only time you don't use the back loop is when you're doing the two together and you're coming into the side row of the row. So that's the only time you're not gonna use it for that one but you will use it for the other one that you're gonna grab onto. So we're going to repeat rows number th one through nine and because it's an odd number it'll make the wedge turn in the opposite direction when you go to do the next one through nine. So one through nine is the repeat and then I just put row number one just to make sure that you understand. It's row one through nine. Uh, for this particular one here is that the last row you're going to finish like it's the second row. So it's essentially just chaining up and just single crochet across the entire uh, back um, loops of going all the way across and then fasten off. So as I mentioned due to the number of repeats the wedge will automatically turn on its own. So let's uh, try and let's begin and we'll do a little mini sample and we'll do some wedging. So I'm letting the color just come out naturally from the ball. That's what you're going to do as well. And what we want to do is that we wanna start with our slip knot. And this is classified as an intermediate level because it's the short rows. And we're going to chain a total of 21. So one, two, three, four. Go all the way to 21. Meet me back here in just a moment. So now that my 21 are done I'm going to turn around and this is considered the foundation row which we're about to do. We're gonna go second chain from the hook so one and two and go to the back uh, hump of the chain and you're going to use that all the way across. So just single crocheting in the back hump and you'll play with that all the way across. This is the foundation row and I'll see you at the end of the row and I'll be right back. So I've come all the way across and I've just single crocheted and now I'm gonna turn and we're going to officially begin row number one which will start the repeat pattern of one through nine. So let's begin row number one which will be the start of the repeat pattern and we are going to be using the back loops throughout this whole thing. So going forward we're going to do that. Now you have to do the first 16 of these single crochets. So you can either count to 16 or you can look at it and count back and just not do the four final stitches in that. It's up to you but we will count it. So we're gonna chain up one and starting in the very first one if you're new to crochet there's two strands and together they make up a stitch. If you use the one that's closest to you that's the front loop and if you use the other one that's furthest away from you diving in between the middle that's the back loop and that's exactly where we're gonna be. So go in the back loop. And what I need you to do is that I need you to single crochet in the back loop going across. So I've already done two so we'll count and three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So once I have my 16, the remaining 4 are going to be untouched. We're going to turn our work and do row number 2. Row number 2, 4, 6, and 8 are all the same. You have to just single crochet in the back loop all the way back. So you're not going to subtract any stitches. That's all that it's going to be. So you'll notice that in the instruction it says second and alternative rows or alternate rows sorry. Um, it is just the same instruction. So you're just going to chain up one and in the back loop only starting in the first one. Just single crochet yourself all the way back to the other side and that will get us ready for the next one. So I'll see you there and we'll start row number 3 in just a moment. So I've now just come all the way back. I've just finished row number 2 so you see that it's awesome and we are going to turn our work and begin row number 3 where we'll be short once again. To begin row number 3 you're going to chain up 1 and you're going to single crochet only in the first uh, 12 stitches. So in the back loop again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And that's the end of row number 3. Turn your work and let's go for row number 4. So row number 4 as I mentioned is like row number 2. So just chaining up 1 and do 1 single crochet in the back loops all the way back to the very beginning. So a nice easy one. This is row number 4. Okay just finished up number 4. Let's turn our work and go for row number 5. Row number 5. Chain up 1 and 1 single crochet in only the first 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. It's getting shorter and let's turn our work and begin row number uh, row number 6. Row number 6 just like number 2 just chain up 1 in 1 single crochet all the way back and I'll see you at the end. I'll have it turned already and we'll get ready for row number 7 in just a moment. Okay I've already just finished my last row so I'm going for row number 7. Chain up 1 and 1 single crochet and only the first 4. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. That concludes off row number 7. Let's turn our work and do row number 8. Like number 2 just chain up 1 and one single in the back loops going across. And then we're going to begin some fun stuff with the final row of the repeat for number 9. So turn your work and let's begin number 9. As we begin row number 9 we're going to chain up and what we need to do is that we need to single crochet in the first 4. This is all in the back loops. Once we get the first 4 we're going to come into the side of this stitch here and put this one with the back loop of this one together as one. So this will hide in this hole that is appearing there. Then we're going to single crochet the next 3 and then we're going to do the same thing. We're coming into the side and the next one. So that's how we're going to do. So remember these circles that you see right here. Those are just the chains of when we're coming back in the other direction. So let's begin row number 9. So let's begin row number 9. So we're going to get ourselves into a flat edge as we're getting a close to it or pretty close to it. So we're going to chain up 1 and in the back loops only you're going to do the first 4. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now the next one is down here. But in order to do that we need to come into the side of this one here first. So just coming into the side of the row. Noticing that I'm not going in between a, uh, uh, a post. I'm going into the side. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through and then I'm going to go into the back loop of the next one pull through and then pull through all 3 loops. And so that is considered uh, 2 together single crochet and you'll single crochet the remaining 3 on the same row. 
So there's three in a, a row that are by themselves. So we're gonna do that again. So we're just gonna come into the side of the row and then we're gonna jump down to the next level. Pull through and pull through all three. And keep doing that all the way across. Okay, so coming into the side and then the back and pull through all three and then do the next three. And then finally the last side, the first one and then you're going to single crochet the remaining three that are left. And that just took you all the way across. It's actually a lot easier than I expected. So we're gonna do that and see you now have your wedge, a nice flat area to start with and then we begin all over, all over again starting with row number one. So let's uh, begin and start with row number one. Okay for demonstration reasons I'm going to do another wedge which is the same instruction of row number one through nine. So chaining up one if you recall and we are just going to go in the back um, um, loops only and you're gonna do the first 16. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And for tutorial reasons I am going to just speed along now so we're just gonna turn and work. This is an alter alternate row so it's just remember row number two. This is row number two then and you're just gonna single crochet in the back um, loops all the way back across. So we're leaving the portion of this empty because we'll pick it up in the future as we're continuing our journey. So continue this and I'll meet you at the end of row number two. So just uh, back post, sorry back loops only, single crochet. So I'm coming up to the end of row number two, turn your work and then we're going to begin row number three. Do you remember what it was? It just chain up one and it's only in the first 16. So the, or sorry first 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And once you get there just turn your work, chain up one and single crochet yourself all the way back and that's row number four. So do that and I'll see you at the end of row number four. So I'm at the end of number four. Let's turn our work and begin number five. To begin number five, do you see how this side is catching up? So that's why the even number of wedges will get it so it's back uh, parallel again. So number, um, as we're moving on, we're going to do the, um, the fifth row and chaining up one and doing one single crochet in the back loops for only the first eight. So I've already done two already, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then turning your work. This is number six. So just chain it up one and one single into the back loop only and this is row number six. So continue and I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm at the end of row number six. We're gonna turn our work and begin number seven. Just chaining up one and we're going to do one single crochet in the first four. This is two, three, and four. And then turn your work and this is row number um, eight. So just ch chaining up one and one single into the four. And then we're going to do number nine next which is gonna go all the way across from what we already know. So turn this and let's begin number nine. So as we begin number nine we're going to start here and then we're gonna pick up all this stuff across and it's gonna make us back to being parallel again. So let's do that. So we're gonna chain up one if you recall and we're gonna do one single crochet in the first four. So one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. 
and then you're gonna come into the side here. So pick that up and then it's the back loop of the next one, the next layer down and do that together and then do the remaining three on that same level. And then coming into the side, pull through the back post, sorry back loops. I was doing a lot of back posting on another project guys, sorry I keep saying that. Okay, once those three are in, come down. It's actually an easy pattern to remember. Okay, and then come into the side. Whoops, the side and then the back loop and then the final three that are left. One, two, and three. So that concluded off row number nine once again. So you can see it's gonna be awesome. So you can see it's gonna be a lot of fun uh, to be able to wear. So what we need to do is that you need, need to do these wedges and you have to have an even number of them so that you come your, you, you come back into balance with this. So then what's gonna happen is that when you're finally done with this you need to finish off like row number two. So you have to do one through nine, one through nine and once you have your even number of these wedges the final row to do it. So let's just say this is the final row and all you're just going to do is do one single crochet in the back loops of each one of the stitches going across. And then you can fasten off and you can add tassels if you want to. It's up to you uh, what you do with this particular creativity and you can finish as long or short as you would, would like to go. So it's a really neat idea and this is a, the short row um, scarves uh, by Yarn Inspirations. It's using the Karen Sprinkle Cakes and I think it's pretty awesome. So I'm almost done. And I'll show you how to fasten off as well. Remember there's only 20 stitches going all the way across so make sure you don't lose sight of that just in case you feel like you're going off in the wrong direction. So once you have this done, you see it's kind of ready for the next one as you're gonna go and this dipping is fine because that's what you're looking for. So it, you know once it starts shaping and it's awesome. So eventually the party's gonna come to an end and you will fasten off. So just trim your yarn. This is really thick yarn so you don't wanna waste too much of it. And uh, you can use whatever you have left for something else if there's anything left. And just throw it through a really big tapestry needle. So the trick to this is when you go to weave them in just stay with inside. Don't impede that edge at all so don't come on the outside. Just stay up underneath the stitches and come through one, the first time. Don't change the shape of the project by being too tight and then going through again a slightly different path the second time. And finally a third time is a charm. And you'll wanna do that with any loose ends that you have of going back and forth three times like that. We saw that request today on the Stitch Social. People were asking how you actually fasten off without having any um, tails falling out. That's exactly how you do it. So this is a really neat idea. This is the Short Row Scarves by Yarnspirations.com. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.